Hi, it's Ashley. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to take a simple yet deep dive into Chinese punctuation. First, we'll talk about five familiar punctuation marks that function in Chinese in much the same way as they do in the West. After that, we'll discuss eight punctuation marks that are completely different from those found in the West or that have a specific usage in Chinese. Along the way, I'll give you English examples of usage for all the punctuation discussed so that you can get the full sense of things even if you're a Chinese beginner. Now, let's get started. Number one, parentheses. Just as in English, a word, clause, or phrase is inserted into round brackets as an explanation or afterthought of a passage. The passage would not be grammatically correct without it. Take a look at this example. She finally answered him after taking a moment to think that she did not want to marry him. Number two, colon. In both English and Chinese, colons precede a list of items, a quotation, or an expansion of an explanation. Colons are also used to separate hours from minutes in a numerical statement of time and when stating the chapter and verse of a Bible reference. Let's take a look at some examples. She answered enthusiastically, Yes, I will marry you. 10, 10 p.m. Psalms 83, 18. In China, military time or the 24-hour clock is very popular. So it's important to note here that statements of time using the 24-hour clock do not use colons. In this example, you'll see that 2.02 p.m. is properly written as 14.02 without a colon. Number three, exclamation mark. Exclamation marks are used to indicate a sudden cry or remark, especially when expressing anger, surprise, or pain. They can indicate that the speaker is shouting or using an expletive or swear word. Take a look at this example. I won the auction. Number four, question mark. A question mark can indicate that a question is being asked to express doubt or uncertainty about something, or to ask a rhetorical question in which no answer is required. Here are some examples. Where is the restroom? This is a simple question. You can also express doubt such as, you're a vegetarian, right? And here is a rhetorical question where no answer is required. Who cares? Number five, semicolon. Semicolons are used to indicate a pause, typically between two main clauses that have no conjunction between them. The pause is more pronounced than that indicated by a comma. Here's an example. Call me tomorrow. You can give me an answer then. Now let's move on to eight punctuation marks that are different from those found in the West or that have a specific usage in Chinese. Before we get started, please smash that like button if you're enjoying the video. Now, here we go. Number one, comma. So I know you're thinking, hey, wait a minute, we have commas in English. Yes, that's true, and there is some similarity in its usage. Just as in the West, Chinese uses the comma to separate clauses within a sentence. However, in Chinese, it's incorrect to use a comma to enumerate a list. In English, enumerating with commas is just fine. We will cover how to enumerate properly in Chinese later on in the video. Here's an example of proper Chinese usage. If it's sunny tomorrow, I will go to the park. I want you to take note here that I'm skipping a discussion of the use of commas within numbers. We'll discuss that in a future video. Why? Because what I have to tell you about it requires its own video. Yes, I have a lot to tell you about that. Number two, dash. A dash in Chinese is used in the same way as English. However, a dash in Chinese is double the length of a Western dash. Dashes are used for added emphasis or to indicate an interruption or abrupt change of thought. 
take a look at the example on your screen. I'd like you to pause the video and read the sentence aloud, first using a semicolon, which has a shorter pause than a dash. Then read the sentence again using the longer pause of the dash. I want you to notice how a dash can subtly change the tone of a sentence. You can also replace an ellipsis with a dash. Both indicate a pause for added emphasis, so it's more of a matter of preference. Here's an example. Why don't you, oh, forget it. Number three, ellipsis. The usage of the ellipsis in Chinese and English is the same. So why is it in this list? Well, because it looks different. In the West, an ellipsis contains three dots, but in Chinese, it properly contains six dots. Generally speaking, an ellipsis is used to indicate an omission of a word or words that are deemed unnecessary or able to be understood from the context. Here's an example using a six-dot ellipsis in an English sentence. I stopped believing in Santa Claus when he asked for my autograph, Shirley Temple. The original quote states, I stopped believing in Santa Claus when my mother took me to see him in a department store and he asked for my autograph. So as you can see, the omitted words were unnecessary for the statement to be understood. Just keep in mind that if you're quoting the words of another person, be careful not to change the meaning of the quote by omitting text and using an ellipsis. If you happen to be studying Chinese in college, the use of the ellipsis to omit words can be quite useful to you if you need to reduce the number of words used in a paper. Did you know that omitting words is not the only function of an ellipsis? It can also be used to create a pause for effect or to show a trail off into silence. Here is an example of a pause for effect. Jealousy is rottenness of the bones. Proverbs 1430. And here's an example of a trail off into silence. With the wind blowing at our backs, we set off. At times, you may also want to imply that you have more to say rather than actually saying something. Here is an example. Our offer has been rejected. Finally, if you're learning how to write Chinese as well, it's important to note that the ellipsis takes the space of two Chinese characters. Number four, enumeration comma. Yes, folks, Chinese has a unique comma for the enumeration of lists. Here is the example from earlier. As you can see, I removed the regular commas and replaced them with enumeration commas. The sentence is now correct using Chinese punctuation. I love my wife, my daughter, my dog, and my cat. Number five, full stop. This punctuation mark has the same function as the period does in the United States. It just looks like an empty circle rather than a dot. Although this punctuation mark looks the same in Britain as it does in the U.S., the Brits call it a full stop. Just as in the West, the full stop is used at the end of simple and complex sentences. You can see its usage in the following examples. My wife loves learning Chinese. Please wait. Number six, middle dot. As a student of the Chinese language, you are no doubt aware that Chinese is written without spaces. The middle dot is used as a separator between the first, middle, and last names of foreigners, minorities, and fictional characters with transliterated names. I am sure you can envision it, but here's an example of its use using English. Minnie Mouse. Don't you just love Minnie Mouse? <laughs> Number seven, quotation marks. If you're using simplified Chinese, quotation marks look the same as they do in English. However, if you're using traditional Chinese characters, square brackets represent quotation marks. And here's how they look. Just as in English, single or double quotation marks are used to mark the beginning and end of a quoted passage. Here are some examples using both the simplified and traditional version of quotation marks. Who wrote, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. 
Here is an example of usage of quotes within quotes. I am so upset with mom right now, said my brother. Last week she said to me, Mark, if you don't clean your room, I'm taking away your Xbox. Yesterday she took it. Number eight, title mark. If you're a French speaker, then the title mark is already familiar to you. In French, it's called guillemet, and it is used in Chinese in much the same way. The literal meaning of its Chinese name is book name mark, which is a real clue as to its usage. Not only book titles, but movie and film titles, the names of magazines and the articles within them, the names of songs and things of a similar nature are properly placed within title marks. If you find yourself referencing another title within a title, single angled brackets are used to set it all. Here are some examples, once again using English. I really enjoyed the drama Faded to Love You. Here's an example of a movie title within the name of an article. Tom Cruise injured on set of Mission Impossible. Now that you understand the function of the most common punctuation marks in Chinese, you may now want to know how to say their Chinese names. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below to a video that will teach you just that. And if you haven't already, please smash that like button before you go, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.